Welcome into the SMU TV studios here in Dallas, Texas for the first Pony Preview Basketball Edition. I'm Peter Warner. I'm Jordan Stallings. And we're here to get you up to date on all things SMU basketball. The first three games have happened, I guess. That's They've one happened. way to put it. They've, They've happened. happened. They've happened. But uh, we're here <laughs> now. Um, but, you know, before we talk about that, it's a first-year coach with Lanier. What have you seen about him building the culture? What are you excited for about him with this program? So what we've seen so far with Coach Lanier is very promising with the culture that he's building and the foundation that he's setting for not only this year, but for the program going forward most importantly, because obviously there's going to be growing pains yes. with almost an entirely new roster. Completely new. <laughs> Literally. No chemistry coming it's in or anything. totally new. And new coach and everything, but with the foundations that he's really kind of drilling into these players mm -hmm. of selfless play, every player is locked in from the – top to the bottom of the roster mm -hmm. they've all accepted their roles that they're playing no matter how big or small they are everyone is playing for the person next to them and not their own personal ambitions or stats yeah. or anything like that so that's really promising that this unselfish culture is really unfolding under Lanier because that's the stuff that's going to last you going forward once these growing pains mm -hmm. start getting out of their system and um, they get into the swing of things, they're going to have that chemistry yeah. as their base. See, one thing I love about him is he's a player's coach, and it's, you know, everything I've heard from your package, from other like interviews I've seen, every player loves him. And they say he cares about them. It's like, yes, he's there to be their basketball coach, but he's also there to be a mentor, and he wants to like, help them grow into good young men, which I think is really cool. For and I sure. like that For part sure. aspect. Um, so now let's get into actual basketball, the actual games. Uh, yeah. Let's start with the positive, the first game of the season. Uh, we took on Texas A&M Commerce, and we won 77 to 60. We looked pretty good that game. We did. There were a lot of really promising things from that game, um, especially first games. The players are lucky just to even make it out with the yeah. nerves that come yeah. with it and everything, which I can only imagine. Um, but Zurich Phelps had a monster game. He had he 28 points, five rebounds, three assists. And Zach Nuttall, we've seen him kind of take – continue with the leadership role that he had on his previous teams here, but he really is stepping into a bigger offensive role along with Zurich, and he had 12 points and three assists and started off the game with an incredible lob to Sam Williamson that kind of set the tone and mm -hmm. got everyone on their feet and excited. And Sam Williamson, speaking of, I was really impressed with his performance. He was incredibly efficient, and I think what we've noticed with Sam as a player is that he's not – necessarily a loud player all the time but he is looking to put his teammates in good positions to succeed and score mm -hmm. but is also only taking shots that make sense yes. he was five for seven 11 points 11 rebounds nine of those rebounds were defensive so he dominated the boards and he had zero turnovers which turnovers in this game were kind of something we struggled with but yeah. he was overall I was really impressed with his performance because it kind of snuck up I was like oh my gosh he has 11 rebounds, and, you know, mm -hmm. his performance was sneaky in the way that he did it, but it was really efficient. And there yeah. were a lot of positives. See, I was going to say, he coming out the bat, I thought he was going to be, like, the star of the team. But honestly, I kind of like his approach, especially since in the preseason he was struggling with shooting because mm -hmm. that's kind of been an issue for him. He's really good with the ball and rebounding and passing with his shot. Shooting has been good, and I really like his approach to shot opportunities and, I guess, the chances he's willing to take and what he doesn't. For sure. Um, and I think that's been very good. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that was a game we were supposed to win, which I'm glad we did. Mm -hmm. um, and it felt good. But then the next two haven't been so hot. Uh, I mean, Dayton actually – so we lost 74-62 to to Dayton. Do you want to just start with that one before we get on to the, the bad, bad one? Yes. So Dayton, it was – there was honestly a lot of promise in he this. looked good. Yeah. And uh, so Zach Nuttall, 20 points, 6 for 15. Um, and overall – Dayton, the environment when you go and play at Dayton is something that is a huge factor. This is a program that is historically a great program. The crowd is rowdy. It's a really hard place to go on the road. And the way that in our second game ever playing together that they stepped in there and really fought, I mean, I think at, they were tied close to the end of the game. They were. 59-59 at one point. For sure. And so I think there's a lot of promise with that. Um, you know, I think what going from there, the drop off to the New Mexico game is kind of what's more That's heartbreaking. Scary. That's the yes. scary part. But I think with this, you can't go wrong with a second game against a 
they're ranked 21st in the country. Yeah, they and go, come away from 62 to 74. I mean, I don't know how it, it got it, to that it, big of a difference. Was, you don't focus on the end. Like no. I think what was the core meat, we're getting better, and then we don't have to talk about what happened after, but we kind of yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So with the Dayton game, also the score is not actually really shows what actually happened in the game. Right. They pulled, they went on like an 11-0 run or practically to end the game mm -hmm. and we, that's when we were just fouling giving them free throws we had to start fouling with like a minute 20 left so that doesn't actually show it It was a lot closer than it looked and for a team that was you know as we talked about brand new put together no real chemistry yet they looked really good and i mean you're playing against a team that's gonna be a four or five seed team in the tournament they're gonna win the a10 this year right so that was really good i think confidence boost i thought it would be a good confidence boost and now we go to uh <laughs> Our most recent game versus the New Mexico Lobos. Um, yes. Ouch. 63-84. Yeah. Tough loss. Wasn't, ah. And I mean, it looks like, I mean, at 11 minutes, we were down. Yeah. 19 to 13 and just never got back up. No. At um, that point, it was. Wonderful. It was long gone. And, you know, I think when you look at our field goal percentage, 35 point nine percent that's ultimately you would like to see mid 40s upper 40s yeah. for um against their 52.5 percent yeah so you know although our three-point percentage has gotten progressively better it, it over the gotten, games, i was gonna say it yeah. started off really bad it did it started off at 16 yeah. percent i believe also so, i swear i feel like teams shoot their best whenever they play smu am i crazy like right. i don't know it's just like we'll tell ourselves things, that <laughs> it's one of those things where you always think that the other team always shoots their best game of the season against right you. but 52 is insane so that that new mexico came to play that game too for sure and i think what was from what i've gathered from listening to Coach Lanier's perspective and Zach Nuttall's perspective of what they had to say after the game. You know, they talk about the scouting report that they had prepared for New Mexico was spot on. And mm -hmm. to the point that both of them mentioned it in uh, their post or press conference mm -hmm. and saying that everything that they had drawn up and memorized for New Mexico is what they ran and what they played mm -hmm. and that their ultimately their preparation and their effort just did not they didn't work didn't, didn't meet. Not meet and yeah. so I think that's what was kind of not disappointing but because it does take a long time or it does take time for mm -hmm. teams to learn how to fight together that is something that time also adds to all of this uh, but hearing from both Zach and coach Lanier that effort on the defensive end is something that they felt like was lacking mm -hmm. is something that obviously is good because it's in their control yeah. and something that they can we've seen that they continuously acknowledging it for sure they're That's aware. Huge. They're aware. That's, yes. Last year, that wouldn't happen. Under, right. Under the old regime, they did not like to take responsibility. I love how they're taking responsibility. I love that, too. Great point. Love it. Um, but, yeah, so that was a tough one. Um, and we got three pretty cupcake games coming up, so not too – or should be cupcake, you know. That's what we, that's, we, that's what we, that's what we thought. <laughs> um, but, so, talking about those three games, who are your three – like, three – not three most impressive players, but just the most impressive – things you've seen in general after those first three games? Yeah, so obviously Zurich Phelps, we've seen him just step into this role that I think he's kind of been waiting to mm -hmm. have. And he's averaging 18.7 points per game. Crazy. Those are Kendrick numbers. I know. Look, it's just I think sometimes, and I think Coach Lanier is really great at this, instilling confidence in yes. everyone that yes. the role that they want to take on is the role they can take on, mm -hmm. you know? Like, it's all up to the players and – He's very, like you said, player first. And so it's like this is your potential that he tells them, this is what I see in you. This is what you can go do. Go do it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's kind of something that he's really stepped into. Uh, Samuel and Effie are really dominating the boards with rebounds. And before the season started, I went to one of their practices, and Coach Lanier, it was an open practice, Coach Lanier mm -hmm. was talking about how amazing of a rebounder Samuel Williamson is and how in his time at Louisville we haven't kind of – we didn't get to see fully what he was capable of, mm -hmm. but Coach Lanier believes that he is a pro and that he is going to be a pro after his time here, and he was talking about his rebounds, and that's something we've definitely seen. Um, and then I think something that is also just really encouraging is the progression. You know, like we've been saying, mm -hmm. they're getting better. It's only three games in. So, hey, and yet sometimes you have to take a step back to go back forward. Right. Mexico State, we'll call that that. Right, exactly. And it's we can't really realistically – take away anything from these three games. No. We're just kind of speculating. It's early. And, yeah, it's so early. But 
ultimately, I think they're looking for small wins. Yes. And also improving each game. And that's what they've been doing, they have regardless been. of the store, score. I mean, you can just look at the stats and say, you want to look at three-point percentage? You look that. I mean, but. We've had improvement in different areas each game. Right. And I'd rather get all the hiccups now where you have one bad game, like for two point, but you shoot well from three. I'd rather get those hiccups out now. Right. Because conference play is really what's most important. Right. And you want to set yourself up for the conference tournament. So I'm good with this now. And I think we're going to continue to improve. And we have some easy games before we have to go to play at Texas A&M. And then we have ASU visiting, who just won the Legends tournament over 20 Michigan. And we have the TCU game coming up. So I, th those are the three <laughs> games that I hope we get the hiccups out for. Um, but yeah, I think Zurich, one thing I think that maybe is helping him a lot is he got to kind of work under Kendrick. And as crappy, I guess, as it is that he had to, he left and transferred, uh, Zurich kind of like learned under him and got to have him kind of as a role model. For sure. When he was here, and I think that's really helped him develop into the point guard. He's not, I mean, obviously, we're actually about to talk about that. He's not officially a point guard, but he's kind of growing into that role and kind of can base it off what he saw from Kendrick and work with Kendrick in the, like, the previous year. So I think that's going to be kind of huge. For sure. I agree. And now, I guess, as we're talking about that, how do you think it's going to work without an official point guard this year? Obviously, Zurich's looking like a point guard, but what do you think on that? So... I think all of this is just going to take time. I think that's the most um, important factor of all this, the thing that's going to matter the most out of anything, either out of chem, or we have the chemistry already, mm -hmm. you know, out of newness, new players, all this combined, I think that time is just what we need. So I don't mm -hmm. think it matters that we don't necessarily have a point guard because I think we have two people in Zach Nettle and Zurich Phelps who are wanting to take on the role of handling mm -hmm. the ball and are kind of taking that on themselves together. Mm -hmm. And I think that's those are two people that are really have been itching to do that. Mm -hmm. Zach has already been a leader. Zurich has just been waiting to erupt, and we're yeah. seeing that now. So, I mean, ask the Golden State Warriors. You don't need a point guard. That's you know? true. That is true. So I think that that's something that a role that they're really both willing to share and kind of take on as the leaders of mm -hmm. this team. Yeah, I think that um, – They'll grow into it, and I know I was looking at our recruiting, we're, we're, we're heavily recruiting in the point guard area too, so this could just be a one-year thing. Right. Um, just to fill in the gaps, but they're doing really well. Um, I mean, I hope it works out. We haven't, I mean, against Dayton, they played pretty well, but I'm kind of worried about teams like Houston where they're known for their defense, how it can work, because right. that could be an issue, but as of right now, I think it's going to be fine, Yeah. and I think he's going to He's molding well so far, and we got a great coach to help him out. So I I'm agree. pretty happy about that. I agree. Um, and then, so now some of these, as we said, we lost the last few games. What were some of those issues that need fixing? So ultimately looking at what needs to be fixed, you start off and over the three games combined, we're just going to look at all of them together. They're shooting below 40% from the field overall, which in order to be an effective team, you're going to need to be in the least. mid to upper 40s. Yeah. And unless you – have one of the top five defenses in the yeah, country and <laughs> yeah in order to execute at the level that I know coach Lanier is hoping that mm -hmm. they do they need to be in the mid to upper 40s for that percentage from the field uh, uh as far from three 25 percent from three over the three games this needs to be in the mid 30s so yeah. it's it's hard to tell if this is execution or if this is something that just needs time yeah. and but as of when we're just speculating as we are that is something from afar that you can look at and say yeah. that's something tangible that uh, they can fix and kind of increase. And then as far as assist and turnovers, they have less assist than their opponents and more turnovers than their opponents in the past three games. Oh, so, but the interesting thing here is that they only have 12 turnovers a game, mm -hmm. which is relatively that's good. Not bad. But their opponents only have 10. Yeah. Which means that they're not forcing any turnovers in their opponents, which could create easy shots and that, easy that, baskets. So points off turnovers are massive for off sure. the fast break. That's huge. Right. So it kind of just points to their defense in that way and then just creating more shots for your team, which mm -hmm. I know they all want to do. So Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, one thing I've noticed specifically on our shots is in and around the paint, we are not making those easy buckets. Yeah. Because we've been pretty dominant in the offensive paint and like getting the ball in there on the post, but we just can't finish those chances. For sure. And I think that's like something that really needs to get stepped up um, and then we talked about this new team, the new chemistry. Only one true freshman this year. And then a lot of people left, and we have so many transfers. How are they looking to you? So 
honestly, from what I've seen in practice in the games, these transfers ha are showing a lot of promise. And I think you, to list them all, we have Samuel Williamson, who's a transfer from Louisville. We have Jefferson Koulibaly, Koulibaly? I think it's from Koulibaly, Washington yeah. <laughs> State. And then Xavier Foster, Mo Naji, Emery Lanier, who is Coach Lanier's son. son yep. He came from Georgia. Davidson. Is he at Davidson? I thought he was at Georgia State with them. Really? He wasn't at Georgia State. So, yeah, he was at Davidson. Huh. But, know you know, that. his whole team was with, or his whole family has actually come here with him from Georgia State. So his okay. daughter goes here now. So everyone's oh, really? officially at SMU. So. That's kind of cool. Um, but Keon, Ambrose, Halton, and Jackson Young, they're all transfers. Mm -hmm. And I've seen promise from all of them. I think that... Like we've said, it's just a matter of time and kind of everyone figuring out what their roles are. And mm -hmm. everyone seems to be, from what I've heard from Coach Lanier, everyone's extremely open to stepping in whatever role mm -hmm. that Coach Lanier has for them. And so, you know, we've seen the promise from Sam. We've seen the promise from Jefferson. We've seen some from Xavier, some from Mo. So it's just going forward. Take it's just time, time yeah. yeah. And we'll see. We, we I'm excited, though. We're, we're, we're here early. Can't go wrong. <laughs> I, I hate speculating early. <laughs> I know. And after that, I'm all like all negative. But I think um, Samuel Williamson, I, and actually a lot of these players, one thing I really like is they're young. They aren't grad transfers. Most of them are younger. They have multiple years of eligibility. So I think in the future, that's going to be really big, and this group can meld really well together. This season, obviously, is going to be growing pains for year coach. But I think the next year and then following years, once we start getting more people to meld with this group, it can be a really good team. I agree, that's 100%. the future I'm looking forward to. Um, and then lastly, we're in non-conference right now. We haven't hit conference play yet. And compared to the last couple years, we have a crazy hard non-conference schedule. It's Hallelujah. insane. I, I love it. We needed it. Yeah, it we makes do. it better. And I mean, that's why we didn't make the tournament last exactly. year. Because we played a soft schedule. Because not not going to say more than yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, we can stop there. Yeah, but, we can uh, stop there. But for sure, I think that is something that is so just... I don't, it just it gives me so much hope seeing that that's the approach that Coach Lanier is taking coming into this Great. program aggressive. because it's 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 aggressive and he's building the culture and legacy that SMU really needs for their basketball program to go forward and to continue to elevate. Mm -hmm. And so I think, as strange as it might sound, strength of schedule is definitely a part of that. You're, oh, it's huge. It's huge, and I like you said that's the reason we didn't get. Into arguably, the reason we didn't get into the NCAA tournament last year, under the Jankovic regime, um, we would have, he had great win-loss records, great win-loss records with the team that we beat Houston and Memphis last year, yeah. who both got in. But when you look at their strength of schedule and what their schedule, uh, where they ranked, Houston was 35th, Memphis was 43rd, we were 87th. It was awful. And so it's, if we're playing teams that can beat high caliber teams, in their non-conference play, and they mm -hmm. can make their schedules difficult and beat those teams, and we're beating them. Yeah, it's great. We need to be elevating to that potential that yeah. we have, and Coach Lanier is definitely yeah, doing that. Yes, I mean, at this rate, we're most likely going to be playing four ranked non-conference opponents. We didn't even play one last year. Right. Which is huge. And also when it comes to recruiting, too, if you're a recruit, you don't want to be playing Jacksonville State in your tournament game like we did last year. Right. We want to be playing with teams like Texas a and TCU, these big-name schools, because that's where you get your name out there, and that's what people watch. And that's going to play a huge role in recruiting, too, and experience for these young players, I think. Those two aspects combined, it's great. Um, I've been hoping to see you know, someone you know, step up and actually try and do something in non-conference and stop being scared, and I'm glad we are. As a Me program, too. it's going to help us take those huge steps to get back to what we were in the early 2010s. Under the Brown era, we were great. Mm -hmm. And now I think this... And they would play crazy schedules back then, too. Right. And I think this will help us get back up to there. Um, and now, pretty much lastly, so these next three games, what do you want to see? Before we close out, it's, we have Evansville, uh, Louis, University of Louisiana, and Lamar, all very winnable games. What do you want to see in terms of growth from the last you know, two tough ones? So I would say, first, that fight and that effort that yeah. they said themselves that they were missing. Because mm -hmm. I think from the outside looking in, I can't tell you if they were fighting or giving yeah. their all. But from if that's what they feel like they were lacking in, that's what I would like to see them mm -hmm. going forward 
addressing, and I think they're going to. I think that loss and coming off from the high of Dayton and then going to that is enough for them to be shocked into that. And so I think that's all we can ask for going forward is just to continue to see these little wins. You know, mm -hmm. the definitely I would like to see them offensively begin to thrive a little more yeah. and get those percentages get up. But ultimately we just want to see the fight, the effort to continue to getting better and to continue to lead this program in the great direction that we know that they mm -hmm. can take it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to see uh, just more, I want our shot making. I just want to see that grow a lot. I mean, we, we're good enough defensively to keep close in this game if we are making our shots in a lot of these games. So that's one thing I'm really hoping for is our shots. You know, Splash Mountain University, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, I know, I like that. Ooh, I like Splash that. Mountain University. <laughs> Um, hasn't been here before, but yeah. we can coin it now. Yeah, I, don't know. I just thought that. I literally just came out. I was like, you know, maybe that's we'll do perfect. that. Get some Todorovic Tudor threes going. From Love the corner. it. Love it. But yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's what I want to see. Um, that's all we got. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We will be back after Thanksgiving with another show uh, and update you then where we'll have Texas A&M game that week. So we'll get you all everything we need to know for Woo. that. Can't wait. All right. Pony up. Pony up. <laughs>